Okay, so we're looking today at radicals and the rational. We kind of introduced it to you late uh, yesterday, but we're gonna go through and review like exponents and all those things, as well as then look at going from radicals to rationals, and ideally, we're gonna stop using the radical sign. Okay, kind of college algebra is kind of that step where we stop using the radical and we just use exponents for everything, okay? So, first things first, introducing, let's go back and let's talk about exponents. So. If I have a times a times a times a times a, times a, times a, times a, times a okay. okay. What does that mean? You take a times itself, how many times? Ten. Okay. So how do I shortcut write that? A to the tenth, right? So a to the 10th. So the anatomy says, okay, that's the base. That's the number that's being multiplied to itself, okay? And then the exponent is simply the number of times it's used. And typically that number there, that a to the n, that n, is typically going to be an integer. So 0 plus 1 or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3. We're going to show you today how that inter how that can now be a fraction. Okay? How we can make that that exponent a little bit of a fraction. Okay. So we simply use the shortcut of exponents. We have the base and then we have the the power. Okay, and then of course we have some that are named, right? kind of like two terms is a binomial, three terms is a trinomial. We have it named, so if I have a to the second, what do we call that? We call we say a what? A a, why, why do we say squared, does anyone know? Say it again. I said square root. Right? Not square root. Why do we say a squared? Why do we use that term? Idea. Well, go back to your geometry class. You have a square, right? And let's say the side of that is A, so this side would also be A. What's the area? A to the second. A squared is the area of A squared. So that's what we call it, A squared. Anything to the second power means squared. It comes from the area. Okay, what if it was to the third power? We call it cubed, right? Anything to the third power is cubed. Why do you suppose we do that? Okay, someone said area of a cube, but it's actually the, not the area, volume. 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 So if you have a cube, and you want this is A, this is A, and this is A, the volume is A times A times A, or cube. After that, we have no other dimensions. There is no fourth or fifth or sixth. You can't do volume of this five dimension object. So we just say to the power, to the fourth power, fifth power, sixth power, and so forth. Another way we use this exponent is we talk about polynomials and the use of polynomials. So if I give you something like a to the fourth, or if you prefer using x, some letter to the fourth power, that exponent, or if I have, you know, plus a to the fourth plus 3a to the third, we can keep adding stuff, a squared plus 1. This exponent is also considered, we'll talk about this next chapter as well, or the next unit, is actually the degree. So that exponent tells us the degree of the polynomial to the fourth degree. So the exponent is used for lots of things. Now, way back when you did exponent rules. Okay. Typically when I teach them in Algebra 2, I do them in one full class period. When you learn them in Algebra 1, you do them in maybe a couple class periods. When you did them in elementary, you may have taken a week or two. I'm going to do them in five minutes. Okay. So if you have questions on the exponent rules, ask them now as we go through them. So first thing first, exponent rules. Quick review of them. Number one, we have the product rule. Product means to multiply. So if I have, let's say, x squared 
and I multiply it times x to the fifth, what is that going to be? And how did you get x to the seventh? You just add them. Because if you think about it, x squared means x times x. x to the fifth means x times x times x times x times x. And you're multiplying them together, so you're really just multiplying them all together. So you really just add the exponents, 2 plus 5. Number two, if we have the product rule and I multiply, then we would have the, what's it called we divide? The quotient. The quotient. The quotient rule, and the quotient rule says, let's take, let's say I have x to the seventh divided by x to the third. So if, I'm, if I have the product rule and I multiply, I add, what am I going to do when I subtract. divide, subtract, very good. So I'm going to have x to the 7 minus 3, which gives me x to the 4th. Which, if you think about that division, just real quick, x to the 7th, I should have done a smaller number, divided by x to the 3rd, if it's on the top and the bottom, they cancel, and I have x to the 4th left over. So division means you simply subtract the x. Number three, we have the power rule. So this time I'm going to have one base. And here's the difference between these two are a lot of times confused. Okay? Up here I'm going to have the base twice. I have x times x. With the power, I'm going to have one base. So I have something like x to the third to the fifth power. So I've only got one base. So what do I do to the exponents here? I multiply them. If you think about it, what does x to the third to the fifth mean? Well, it means x to the third times x to the third times x to the third. And what does x to the third mean? x times x times x and so forth. So it simply means we have 15 x's. Please make sure you see the difference between product and power. That are the two that are most confused. All right, rule number four. So let's see, we had product, power, quotient. Uh, the next one we have is the negative exponent. Okay. So I would really encourage you in college algebra, never have negative exponents. Always write things with positive. Okay. So what negative exponent means, if I give something like x to the negative 2, someone remember how we re rewrite that? Yes? Is it going to be negative x to the power of 2? Okay, so this negative here has absolutely nothing to do with the negative out front. Okay. Those two things are 100% unrelated. Okay? So what do I do with it? Yes? Make it one half. Make it what? You're on the right track, but not quite. Okay. I am going to move something to the denominator. Oh, put a one where? Over. You take this whole expression and move it to the bottom and make it positive. Those two things mean the same thing. It's all about location. If it's in the numerator, you simply move it to the denominator and make it positive. If I give you one over x, to the negative fourth. It's in the denominator and it's negative. So what am I going to do to it? Move it to the, to the numerator and make it positive. Exactly right. It's all about location, where it's at. Okay. The negative exponent has nothing to do with what's out front. It has nothing to do with the, the value of the number. It simply is where it's at, where it's located. Okay. Now if you think about that for just a second, okay, let's just kind of run through something real quick. What if I give you x to the second divided by x to the third. Okay? What am I going to do to those exponents with the quotient rule? Subtract. Subtract. So I'm going to have x to the 2 minus 3, which equals x to the negative 1. Say again. Which would be 1 over x to the first. 
if I write this out, I have x times x divided by x times x times x. Two cancel, I'm left with one over x. So with the quotient rule and the negative, it kind of makes sense. It's all, but it's just simply all about location. You simply have to pick the whole thing, move it to the denominator, or move it to the numerator. I would really encourage you on, I know delta math is gonna require this. I'm really gonna have it true on tests, on quizzes. Everything needs to be positive. Never leave an answer with a negative x. They're just ugly. We don't like them. Okay, rule number five. This is kind of the dull one. It's the zero exponent. Okay. Now, probably an algebra two teacher of yours, for some of you that was me, uh, maybe an uh, algebra one teacher told you that any number, x to the zero power, always equals what value? One. One. Always equals one. Doesn't matter if it's 4,368,410 x to the 14th y to the 75th, all of that to the zero power. That would be equal to one. I can even go in here and put the integral from four to seven of f of x dx. I can put something weird in there. What's the answer? One. Anything to the zero power is going to equal one. Okay, you've heard this before, right? They lied to you. There is one exception. Okay? You never need to know it until you get to calculus, but here's the one exception. Are you ready? Don't ask me how. I'm not going to explain it. But zero to the zero power is actually, I'm sorry, not undefined. It's actually indeterminate. indeterminate. That's nice. That's really cute. You won't see it in this class, but just so you know. Okay, zero to the zero power, we have issues with that one. Okay. Zero is kind of a funky number. So for us, everything to the zero power is going to equal one, doesn't matter what's inside. Okay, now, I do have one warning. If you're taking notes, which so many of you are, I do have a warning. I will, I will promise you I will probably correct this 20 times in the next two weeks in this class alone. Okay, these two things, negative two, let's see which one I use in my notes here. Negative two to the fourth, Hi. is he coming back or you need a lot? Yeah, schedules. Right. Negative two to the fourth power is not the same as negative two to the fourth power. Those two things, it's a common mistake, you make it all the time. A lot of you, when you get your calculator, you will see this, you will make this mistake on your calculator. But my calculator told me that it's, that, no, no, operator error, okay? What's the difference between these two? This one has parentheses, right? Which means the exponent affects what? It affects what's closest to it. So in this case, it affects the parentheses. Over here, what does the four affect? Just the two. It affects what's closest to it. So this side here, negative two to the fourth, is gonna be negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two, which we know is going to be a positive 16. Because four negatives will cancel each other out. Negative two to the fourth, what's being taken to the fourth power? just the two. So that's negative two times two times two times two, which gives me a negative 16. I promise you, you'll make the mistake on a calculator and not even realize it, so please be careful. If your work says to use a parenthesis, please in your calculator use a parenthesis. And by the way, if we say x to the second power, okay, and then we say that x equals negative three, What's being squared? The negative three. This is then you would put in negative three squared. You have to put the parentheses in. Okay. So be very careful with that example. Okay. Odd powers don't matter because they're both be negative. But when we have even powers, that's when we have the issue. Okay. It's a little warning, especially when you get to capital.
Okay. Good review? Sure. All right, so now to the actual lesson. Okay. Right there. That's all I got. I think we did it the other day. I think we did it in class the other day. We're going to do more one or two or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Note. Um, this is going to be the rational exponents. So if I give you something like, um, let's say the fourth root of x to the fifth, how did we tell you the other day to rewrite that? Did I tell you the other day to rewrite that? Did we didn't talk about this at all? Yeah. We did? I thought we mentioned it. What rational we did? It's x. Fraction. Oh, it's x. I think he mentioned it. Very good. So what we know is we know that the exponent is going to be power divided by root. So we simply take x, the power of 5, to the root of 4. So it's x to the 5 fourths power. And that's how we get fractional exponents. We're hit, we've thrown a root now. Rather than, just the, rather than just the exponents, like 1, 2, 3, 4, we now have that root in there, fourth root. So x to the 5 over 4. And it really doesn't matter how it's written. We can have the fourth root of x taken to the fifth power. That's still going to be the same thing. x, fifth power, fourth root. Ready either way. So how would I write the third root of 16? to the one-third. Now, when you get a calculator, you start putting things in calculators, depending on which one you use, you may have to input a little differently. If you always put parentheses, if you always would go 16, exponent, and then do 1 divided by 3, you're safe. Always put that fractional exponent in parentheses. Sometimes, if you don't put in parentheses, then it would do 16 to the first power divided by 3. And that's not what we want. Okay. So make sure you put that one third in parentheses, particularly on the, the blue ones. I think the inspire is the same one. I learned that before. Yeah, I hate for you to get done with the test and realize the whole test was done. All right, one more example, and then I'll take any questions you have. What if I give you, let's see here, um, First thing is to write it as a positive exponent. So how would I make that negative one half a positive one half? Yes. One goes on top, and the whole thing goes to the bottom, right? So I have one over forty-nine to the one half. Okay. Now, what is forty-nine to the one half? Seven, so say the square root of seven, uh, 49. So your answer would be one, seven. I lied to you, I have one more example. This comes straight from Desmos. Or not Desmos, uh, what's the other one? Delta. Delta Math, thank you. I lied to you. Here's one example from homework. Okay, it'll give you something like this to, to simplify. In fact, I did this with my son last night. He's taking college algebra at Long, Longview. Can't come to my class, but that's okay. Uh, let's say I give you something like um, 25. X to the third, Y to the fifth, everything taken to the one half power. Simplify.
25x to the third, y to the fifth, all of that to the one half power. So if I have a power out here, I'm going to use the power rule, correct? And what am I going to do? Multiply what? Multiply all the exponents, correct? So we have an understood one here. So that's going to be 25, 1 times 1 half, this is the 1 half power, times x, what's 3 times 1 half? Not 1.5. Let's keep it in improper fractions. 3 over 2. y to the 5 times 1 half would be, leave it as an improper fraction, 5 over 2. Pretty sure delta math wants them as improper fractions. What's the only thing I can simplify off this? Yeah, 25 to the 1 half is 5. So your final answer looks like this 5x to the 3 halves, y to the 5 halves. So leave them improper, make sure they're always positive. I lied to you, I have seven more examples. Okay, so if there's any questions, anything we need to see over, please ask. We'd like to come around and help you. Otherwise, you have homework. If you're done with 1A and 1B, lecture three is out there. Good enough. Great question. So, do you mind if I just adjust this one? Yeah, yeah. Let's say that's a negative. Okay. That means all of these would become negative, which means all of this would be one. Okay, so it's different. The negative just moves it through them to all of them. Okay. Yes. Okay, for you, 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 Yes. Now is definitely the time to ask questions. We'll let the people work with me. Get her done.